to the four agreements book um last week we did the first agreement which was be impeccable with your word this week is going to be the second agreement which is don't take anything personally which i think is really good tools for everyone to live by because if you learn not to take things personally especially in an argument then you i feel like you can have better relationships with people because you won't basically be so um hurt by everything you know it's like almost like having a shield so I'm going to read a little bit out of the um, four agreements. And uh, so the, the second agreement is don't take anything personally. Okay. Whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Using an earlier example, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, you are stupid. Without knowing you, it's not about you, it's about me. If you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you are stupid. Maybe you think to yourself, how does he know? Is he clairvoyant? Or can everybody see how stupid I am? You take it personally because you agree with whatever was said. As soon as you agree, the poison goes through you and you are trapped in the dream of hell. <clears throat> what causes you to be trapped is what we call personal importance. Personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. During the period of our education and our domestication, we learn to take everything personally. We think we, we are responsible for everything. Me, me, me. Always me. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are in a completely different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world on their world. So basically what I got from that is, um, I know like a couple of rules that I live by is for example, um, and I had to learn this because I was very argumentative at times. Like if somebody was arguing with me, then I'll argue back with them. And what I learned is, like, who said, you know, because that this person made me feel bad or because they made me feel some type of way, I had to make them feel that way, too. So what I'm starting to learn is, you know, people are all going through their own things in their own mind. So with me knowing that, I'm starting to learn how to kind of dial back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just because somebody come and attack me, you know what I'm saying? I might breathe a little bit before I respond instead of just reacting, like, you are not going to have control over me. I'm going to have control over myself. So once a person can make you react in a negative way, they now are controlling you. So just remember that. Um, what I want to talk to, what I want to talk about today is we have a moon, a waning moon, which is the gibbous moon, which is um, basically the moon is in waning for seven days. So there are different traits and different um things that you should w watch out for during these seven days for example during a waning moon you want to cut loose of anything that is either pressure or you know saying it's not right with your spirit what i mean by that is um for example you might hear people say you know um if you clip your ends during a full moon like your hair will grow longer like this is around the time that you want to do that so i'm gonna get into what does a waning gibbous moon mean just after full moon, when the face of the moon is 100% illuminated, the intermediate phase called waning gibbous moon starts. Waning means that it is getting smaller. Gibbous refers to the shape, which is less than the full circle. 
of a full moon, but larger than the semicircle shape of the third quarter moon. At full moon, the moon rises at sunset and sets at sunrise. At third quarter, the moon rises at midnight and sets <clears throat> at noon. Okay, and then I, I went to, um, I googled basically what does a full moon mean sexually? And the reason why I'm doing this is because the moon affects you, whether you believe in this stuff, it's really not a belief, it's just what it is. You know, we are like, not saying controlled, but you know, astrology is really important in your day-to-day -day life. You should know your natal chart. You should know like basically how, how are you affected by these different type of, um, what would you call it? How are you affected by these different type of uh, signs? Like, you know, your Taurus, your moon, your sun, your moon, and your ascendant. Like how does it affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? So I Googled, with a waning moon basically so what does a full moon uh mean sexually during a full moon the gravitational pull increases it can affect brain function leading to greater feelings of arousal it leads to humans having more energy feeling more extroverted and connected to our partner and having more intense sex so um in relationships right now basically i guess what i got from that is like it's bringing you close together. Like right now, this moon for the next seven days, it should you should be coming closer together. You should be feeling more at peace with one another. You should, the communication should be better, if that makes sense. Um, what is the waning moon good for? The waning moon is the time period in which the moon is getting darker again, moving from a full moon back to new. Remembering sympathetic magic, the waning moon is great for banishing work or cutting cords with a past lover. So now we're going to get into, now I ended on that note, um, the tarot that I wanted to do as a collective tonight is was basically over soulmates or, you know, if you're married, your love life. Um, so basically I'm going to do a tarot over that. So the first question I'm going to ask is from, let me see, how can I write this? Um, for the week, for the week. What can you expect from your lover? For the for this week, what can be expected from your lover? For this week, what can be expected from your lover? For this week, what can be expected from your lover? For this week, what can be expected from your lover? Got your charger. Okay. <laughs> Careful so you don't knock my phone off of it. <laughs> okay. What can you expect from your lover for the week? What can you expect from your lover for the week? Or maybe even a secret admirer. What can we expect? I'm going to pull three. Okay. This one wants to come out. The first one that I pulled was seven of summer. And I'll read it when I pull out. I always like to pull three. It's something about the number three. Being I was born at 3.33 p.m. Like the three. Trinity is really a big number to me. So I'm going to pull out three. What can you expect from your lover for the week? What can you expect from your lover for the week? Come on, what you want to tell us? Okay, that one jumped out. The second I put out is the Empress. Okay, we just need one more. What can you expect from your lover for the week? What can you expect from your lover for the week? What is to be expected from your lover for the week? What is to be expected from your lover for the week? Just need one more. Okay. Hold on, we got two. So instead of doing three, we're going to do four. Okay, the first one that came out is seven of summer. No more procrastinating. Your power comes from making a decision. Confusion that arises from overanalyzing the options. Hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> and then we have three. My number. The Empress. Time to take action. The power of creativity to success that allows for a life of luxury. Hmm. 
See? That, like, I just keep getting, like, and that's what's going on right now with the moon. Cutting all loose ends and living your life abundantly. Like, it is time to live abundantly. So, anything that is not progress, progressing you, let it go. Like, that's just how I feel in this moment. That's the energy that I'm getting. And then we have um, the sun. Plans that work out perfectly. Amazing ideas that lead to rewards and commendations. Gratitude for the blessings of life. Mm. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> These some good readings. Oh, I gotta hit that. Hey, hit the, <laughs> hit, hit the bow one time. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando. I have my friend Orlando here playing the singing bow for us. <laughs> okay, Seven of Winter is the last one. There is a better choice. Not seeing things clearly. Running away from the truth. Ooh, that's a good one. We just had this conversation. <laughs> Running away from the truth. That's still basically... Okay, so what I got from this reading is what I've just been saying since I started. Like, now is the time to cut all loose ends. Now is the time for you to live abundantly. You know, you're not going to live abundantly in fear, doubt, anger. You know, you just have to... You really have to be light. You have to move in light. And in order to do that... You have to release things that are no longer serving you your, or your purpose for the greater good. It can be food. I'm not going to say this is not just relationships. You know what I'm saying? This can be a sistership. This can be brother between brothers. This can be food that you eat. You know what I'm saying? You know that you shouldn't be eating pork anymore. So let it go. Like, it's time. The pig, you know, oink, oink. <laughs> let, let Drop it. But yeah, um... Man, I am still doing um, private readings and I do not charge at the moment because I am still developing the talent for it. But if you are interested in getting a private reading for either, you know, I'm basically just required that you ask three questions and I require the only requirement is that um, you have to basically give me blessings. That's it. So, you know, I mean, who don't want to jump on that? Jump on that. Because I want to better, like, I know that if I help you, I'm helping myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's all that I want to do. So, um, I'm going to end on this note. It's not that long, I know. But I just basically wanted to touch on, you know, what's going on right now. And, you know what I'm saying? If you've been feeling lately like things are heavy or, you know, like a lot of chaos, you know, it's time to cleanse yourself, cleanse your space, like I've been saying um because it's a lot of positive energy going around so use it for the greater good use this energy to manifest what you do want not thinking on what you don't want because what you think you manifest so you have to remember that so i'm going to end on this note peace and light islam <laughs>